Before I ask to table 6259, this is about the uh, marijuana ordinance. Anybody that wants to speak on this subject, I'm going to allow three minutes. Come up, say whatever you have to say, and then any council person that wants to speak on this will be able, so hopefully we'll get your questions answered. Sir, please just give your name, your address, and this will be on the marijuana topic only. Right, I'm Dave Evans. I'm the general counsel to an organization called the Marijuana Industry uh, Victims Educating Litigators. And I'm speaking against the commercialization of marijuana uh, because you're gonna create a whole new class of victims. Uh, when I give these talks, I ask people three questions. I ask them, first of all, do you think that the tobacco industry is looking out for your family's best interest? Nobody says yes. And then I say, do you think the opiate industry is looking out for your family's best interest? Nobody says yes. And then I say, do you think that the marijuana industry is going to look out for your family's best interest? Absolutely not. Okay. This is about making money. They are flooding the state right now with lobbyists because they think that they're going to get marijuana commercialized in New Jersey. Commercialization of marijuana is different from just plain legalization. People think of legalization as somebody just smoking a joint at home on a Saturday night. Commercialization means in your face marijuana stores, advertisements to your children. And I would urge you not to bring a marijuana store into Linden. Uh, I'm very concerned about the social justice issue about minority kids getting arrested for marijuana. I helped write a bill for Senator Rice that will solve that problem. It'll make it a civil matter. Uh, the kids, where appropriate, will be offered an evaluation and treatment and an automatic expungement of their record. They will not have an arrest record, and that will occur automatically without them having to do anything. Uh, and I would hope that that would solve some of the uh, problems concerned with that. Um, marijuana is a lot different today than it was when I smoked pot in college. I, I'm a child <laughs> of the 60s, and um, I have to admit, I did indulge. Uh, back then, marijuana was 2 3% THC, and I got pretty stoned on it. They now have marijuana products, which the marijuana industry is going to bring into New Jersey, 99% THC. It's crystallized THC. It looks like crystal a meth. I sent you an email with a color photograph of that. That's what you're getting in New Jersey. You're going to get gummy bears, candy, soda, marijuana ice cream, all kinds of things like that. And they're going to do the same thing that the tobacco industry did, try to get kids hooked early so they have lifetime customers. Um, is marijuana addictive? Yes. I represent several addiction treatment programs. I guarantee you it is. The United States Surgeon General says it is. The World Health Organization says it is. The National Academy of Sciences says it is. And it's very dangerous. This high potency THC to mental health. The American Psychiatric Association has come out in it. The New Jersey Psychiatric Association has said do not commercialize marijuana. How is it going to help your town to have a pot store in your town? The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to have more marijuana users coming into your town, driving into your town, getting stoned, and driving on your roads. Not going to help your police department if you get Senator Rice bills passed, where it's just giving them a citation. They're not, not going to have to take them down to the station house and arrest them. Uh, it's not going to help your police to deal with more drug driving. And if you look at the data from Colorado, there's more deaths, more drug driving. Thank um, you, sir. Thank you for your time. And you. I'll be sending you some emails on this. I've got a lot of information, and I'd be happy to sit down and talk at any time, and I appreciate this opportunity to Thank speak. You. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Mack, you were up? I get with the gentleman. Look this way, sir. Where? With the pink shirt. Oh, sir, you want to speak also on this? No? Okay, Mr. Mack. Thank you. On behalf of, of, the, of the people, I, I listened to you attentively very tentatively. And we are living according to the scriptures in a new world. Because Revelation said, behold, I make all things new. And the bottom line, we have a generation in play. God is the beneficent, the most merciful. The families, on their, in your regard, sir, must be acknowledged. If your child is raised right, they'll go right. So now, this society that we live in today 
it has always brought us back to what they were doing, we call it, we call it at that time moonshine. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. They call it moonshine. Look what they did with moonshine that was illegal. Yeah, uh-huh, yes it was. Now look at every corner got a liquor store on it because of the factor that it makes money. You, I do not find nowhere, I have not heard any serious incidents of marijuana causing people to go throw people, they throw babies into the water. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that on the news. I would respectfully ask, this is a situation that deserves to be discussed in the wards of their community and let the community from the first ward to the 10th ward let those council members visit their ward and then bring the report back to the mayor, our president of the city council, and then let it go to the caucus meeting and let it be discussed. Because it will be, it will be blindfolded. You will be blindfolded to take it any other way other than the way I suggested. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Sir? Council President, Council Mayor, my name is Stephen Reed. I'm the mayor of Point Pleasant Beach, and uh, I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, you know, Linden brings back a lot of memories. Uh, my grandmother grew up, uh, well, she didn't grow up, but she lived at Lincrest. So I was in Linden many, many uh, times. So just driving uh, through your town on the way here, uh, you're doing a great job. So I just want to say it's great to be here. Um, I believe uh, my grandmother went to church right next door. So uh, Point Pleasant Beach was the first town to say no to dispensaries. Uh, if, we, if we talk to Senator um, Rice from Newark, he calls it pot shops, not dispensaries. Dispensaries make it look clean. It's not. He's very worried about what's going to happen to this community. I want to commend you all. I know that you, you tabled it, but I believe you will pass something in a time to say no to recreation marijuana. I think it's going to be uh, hurtful to your town, to your residents. Uh, I am the executive director of New Jersey RAMP, responsible approaches of um, uh, marijuana policy. We represent, we have police chiefs, uh, state police, uh, scientists, doctors, uh, people who are on the front lines, prevention, and they're telling you and they're telling everybody, and I hope you read all the information that uh, uh, David has sent to you, uh, it's not good. W what's going on, w what you see in front of you is the David and the Goliath fight, okay, because the pro-marijuana um, has all the lobbyists and then there's just me. <laughs> but we have an amazing group with amazing people with moms and dads and people who really care about what's happening and, and they're very nervous, okay? So now people are taking the medical and then the, and they're trying to, um, you know, kind of confuse you. And what David talked about is the edibles and the lollipops and the sodas and all the little fixtures of, of like the kids, right? You all, you all fought, remember, remember the camel, right? We said, no, no, right? What's happening, it's coming back again. So I just wanna say, I'm traveling around the state. I believe, I believe there's over at least 40 towns. I believe there's more, but I, I'm trying to keep track of them. And I've been speaking and they were saying, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do what's right for our town. In Point Pleasant Beach, uh, hopefully you've all been there, um, you know, it's a family-friendly town, right? Just like you, you have a family-friendly town. That's what you want to promote. You don't want to promote smoking uh, marijuana on the boardwalk, on the beach, or in your downtown. We didn't want to do it. I know that you don't want to do it, and I, and I just commend you, all right? I really commend you for your strength to do the right thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else? Mr. Uh, Halloran. Good evening, everybody. Uh, again, my name's Kirk Haller, 120 Donaldson Plates. Uh, about this marijuana, I don't particularly favor anybody having a dispensary in town, because one, I don't know how it's gonna affect my property values. And I know the city's working real hard to help bring up our property values. And it is more of a tax issue, because I know the state government has said if they do pass legalized recreational marijuana, they were expecting 300 million in new taxes brought into the state. While everybody can understand the state needs more money because they don't know how to manage it, uh, how, is the city expecting any of that anticipated 300 million? And again, what is a dispensary of marijuana in this town or in this city 
going to do to the city and the property values. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any, ma'am? Hi, I'm Diane Litterer. I'm the CEO of the New Jersey Prevention Network. But I think more relevant for today's discussion is I'm also a resident, lifelong resident of Union County, right now Roselle Park. Um, for 20 years of my career, worked throughout Union County with prevention links, doing prevention programs, working with communities to make a difference in families and children's lives. Um, I have been following the marijuana legalization trend across the country and have read research and data and so forth and seeing the negative impact marijuana legalization is having on communities. You hear about Colorado, California being legal, um, but two thirds of their communities have said no. Um, one third that have said yes, many of them trying to back out of that decision, um, but the businesses establish themselves and they're not able to kind of turn around. The communities are saying this is not what we voted for. Um, we really just didn't want our kids getting arrested. What they didn't realize, as the previous speakers talked about, is the promotion, an industry that pushes, um, that misrepresents their products. Um, having experience working with the other two legal substances of tobacco and alcohol, research of many years with those experiences, the higher level of density for the outlets, you know, more stores in your community, the more use that kids and adults will have. So the higher levels of addiction rate, the higher level of youth use rates um, are happening not only in the states, but in more particular in those communities that unfortunately have the outlets. So I really commend you for taking the step to consider banning and not allowing um, the outlets to be here. As again, as a resident in Union County, I care about the county. Um, we know that things don't just happen in a community, so I'm hopeful that the entire county, uh, my grandchildren are now being raised in Colonia, which is again a neighboring town, and I really want the town councils that can make these decisions to be informed and to care about our communities, our children, and our families, and make the decision like you're hopefully going to make in banning um, the outlets so that it can be someone else's problem far enough away so that it's not impacting our children and families. So thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Excuse me? I didn't hear. He can only speak once. Tell him he can only speak once. <laughs> yes, please. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Hans Herberg. I live at 5101 Westover Road. Um, it's good to see everyone. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned, I got to agree, I mean, banning outlets of marijuana, I mean, it could cause a lot of impact to our community. I mean, we have grown over the years, but we want to create higher values. I mean, look at downtown Linden. We had a street fair and other events. I mean, we want family kids, you know, go to nice shops downtown, you know, raise a community. I think the town, I mean, deserves better. I mean, you know, everyone could grow up, raise a family, make a difference, you know, be proud. But I mean, when I grew up, we were always told about saying no to drugs. I mean, making about right choice. I mean, I mean, parents lead by examples. You know, we got to lead kids on the right choice. But, you know, even when I did research, like I agree with everyone, when you look at California and Colorado, there's been a lot of risk concerns with the marijuana. I mean, there's, for example, like let's say you're driving behind the wheels with alcohol, but you know, with marijuana, there's been a lot of accidents that happen and bad judgment and choices to make. And I really hope the council will, you know, be careful, uh, make a rightful choice for the future. I mean, I mean, think of the children. I mean, we want to make sure we have a great community for kids and have a good education system, but if anybody got caught, you know, since, you know, create a program or create something to help them get back on their feet. You know, I got to agree with the others, but, you know, thank you guys. Thank you. Anybody else? Council President. Um, I just want to speak on this uh, in the form, uh, in, in, in the interest of transparency, so everyone here and everyone at know, home knows what happened. Um, this ordinance was on for first reading last month. Uh, the synopsis simply said, uh, 
The synopsis certainly said uh, revising prohibited uses. It didn't say anything about marijuana, which is why I didn't really raise any flags with everyone. Um, you know, there's a lot of redevelopment going through. There's, there was a lot of, so that, that got by, and that's a mistake. Um, this should have been already brought up. So when it was brought up last night, um, council basically unanimously chose to table this because the ordinance reads, and I'm paraphrasing the ordinance, but the ordinance reads um, prohibiting medical um, marijuana testing facilities, warehouses that might cultivate marijuana, um, as well as retail. So it was basically banning everything. And council unanimously kind of said, well, what's wrong with medicinal? Um, the state recently expanded the program. Um, there's six more licenses going out. And I actually got contacted um, by a company or two that wanted to have their, um, not a shop, but a, you know, the same one they have in Woodbridge, a, a medical marijuana dispensary in Linden and, and rent out a warehouse to do so. And since the application is due August 31st, um, when they heard this ordinance was on, they abandoned that. To, they abandoned it. They're like, all right, we gotta go find somewhere else because we don't have we have a limited amount of time to apply for the license. Um, so, again, in, in transparency, I suspect that this ordinance will be tabled indefinitely. It will be rewritten, and it will come back, um, not including anything medical, anything testing, um, and thus. So, thank you, Council, Council President. President. Thank you. Councilman Brown. Thank you. Okay, um, yes, this ordinance is being tabled because the medical part's being taken out and what New Jersey ramp, Stephen, everyone's talking about is the recreational. So I wanna separate that. I don't think anybody here is against the medical. It's a recreational component. So I wanna make that clear because that and alone is where all the confusion is when we're talking about commercialization of marijuana is the recreational part that I personally have a problem with as others. Um, but to give a little bit more further background, this was on last month after two months ago and it's in the minutes of the meeting when we approve the minutes, requesting why haven't we had our meeting yet? Because we have an ad hoc committee that was set up, if everyone remembers, November of last year. To date, we still have not had a meeting in regards to this very important issue. And I said this is a very important issue because I just saw the superintendent and, and our state director, both of them are both on board saying, we don't want this in our town. The superintendent saying, we already have a problem with drugs in our school. This is gonna make it worse. Um, with NJ Ramp, we've met with uh, Steve Sweeney's office, because um, um, they've heard our concerns, met with Speaker Coughlin, met with him personally, met with Senator Rice, um, we talked about the decriminalization bill, Senator Vital, who's also chairman of the Health Committee, all of them are Democrats who have problems with this bill already. And if you remember, Phil Murphy talked about, oh, this is gonna get done in 100 days. We're, we're past 200 days now, because more and more issues are popping up that we should be concerned about. You know, our education system, one, uh, two, public health, quality of life. Um, the social justice aspect, that's a whole nother subject as far as jobs and testing and things of this nature that no one's talking about. Uh, that's gonna affect the minority community. I'm the only person on this diocese that actually went to Colorado. And the perception of it being the plant is gone. I went to a dispensary and I have pictures, of, and I have no problem talking to people about it, where the guy told me five years ago used to be where you would grow the plant and the store owner will buy it. He says, they're not even selling the plant anymore, is that they've gone to these vapor products, they got in the form of pills, they have in the form of um, massage oil, gummy soda, bears. gummy bears, all this other stuff. And what has happened is that now it's created a gray market. Now take that gray market, if you go buy it legally here in New Jersey, and we just brought this up, you can go in New Jersey Transit from New York to Linden, buy it here and go back up. And currently right now, if you ask that police chief, we don't get any help from New Jersey Transit or the state police in regards to the drug activity that's happening at the train station. And almost every meeting, people are coming up about the activity that's happening at the train station. If we open up those shops here, you're gonna have increased traffic here. Wood Avenue, take it for example, you have school one, school two on the other end, school six, school eight, you sold middle school, the Linden Board of Education. What are we teaching our kids in one sense we have Sandy here, who's in, where's Sandy? Vasquez, where we work together on the Municipal Alliance, where we get money, strictly some of the programs are for prevention of marijuana. We're doing the counterproductive. We're teaching our kids not to smoke, and in the same sense, we're telling them it's okay because the state wants to make money off of it. Thank you, now, Councilman. 
I'll talk about it in the again. I'm glad you guys think it's funny because I chose. Enough, you. enough. No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't start. No Stop. Problem. Councilwoman Hickey? You were the one that got in trouble with the Stop. Trouble. Stop. Peter, stop. Um, well, first of all, everybody's opinion inside I do appreciate on this subject. Um, as I brought up last night at our caucus meeting, uh, just like this ordinance wasn't written pro properly and needs to be tweaked, we have the same issues with our legislature right now who are making changes to make differences on this bill. Um, I think it is extremely premature for us to pass anything in our city just yet. Uh, because I don't think we should bite off our nose to spite the, our face. I don't think we should be having stores and everything on Wood Avenue. Um, but I do feel if there's an opportunity to make money and we have property um, and there are incentives in there for us to make money and revenue, uh, we should be given that opportunity. I believe once the law is passed, which I do agree, then then maybe meetings should come, committee meetings, and we should make some decisions as a council and governing body on all these issues. Uh, however, I, I do feel at this time it's premature. You know, many years ago, we had the incinerator that they wanted to put in Linden. Well, you know, they... We missed that opportunity. However, it's in railway and everything from the incinerator is blowing on Linden. So I, I just, I think for our city, it's, it's a little premature. Yes, everything starts from home and we guide our children and teach them the right way. Um, I am 100% for medicinal marijuana. I've had a sister who's been sick for 20 years and gosh, I do know that that would help her. And all her physicians right now, it's, it's very hard for her to get. And if she does get it, it's unaffordable. And she's already on a fixed income because she's disabled. And my husband and I and, and many friends of our help her along as it is. So those laws and, and, and need to be tweaked. But we need to have those availabilities around our county or our state uh, for our, our, sick, our sick people who really do need it. Um, I uh, thank you for coming tonight, Mayor. I do have to agree with you. If I was in Point Pleasant, you'd have a firm no for me right now. Uh, but you know what? We're not Point Pleasant. And uh, certainly, I, just as on the boardwalk, I wouldn't want that on Wood Avenue if our children are going up there. But quite frankly, at this point, I don't even like my children going on Wood Avenue. So um, I just don't think we should spite our front nose to, uh, you know, and we should uh, wait and see when the law is brought out and, and everyone tweaks it and, and see what happens then. It's premature. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask for a motion to. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman. Councilman Mohammed? Yes, I'd like to be heard on it. I agree with the attorney. I'm against any commercialization. We already have a dope culture in this society already. I mean, anybody, all you have to do is look at the opiate. I'm hoping the President of the United States and others, and I commend Governor Christie for ticking up the opiate um, epidemic. Uh, it's not even an epidemic, it's a pandemic. So we're going to contribute to it? I don't think it's expedient. I agree with the councilwoman when she talked about incineration. But I mean, I know what incineration, if you have a culture incineration, then you have a ma mass incarceration. All this is going to lead to is crime, debauchery, and destruction, and some money in some unscrupulous capitalist pocket. I'm on the record, unabashed, unapologetic, without hesitation, totally opposed to legalization of marijuana. I don't want to see this country go down a route that tobacco industry has destroyed this country. There's plenty of ways to make legitimate money without corrupting our children and our society. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. That was incinerator. Stop, in stop, it doesn't matter. It does. At this time, I want a motion to table this. House President, make a motion to table ordinance. 62-59. And ask for a second. 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 Mrs. Ormond. Yes. Javik. Yes. Brown. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. 
Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. 